Welcome to the Easton School Planning Committee meeting of Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. In keeping with an act relative to extending certain state of emergency accommodations, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Attendance by committee members will be remote and remote attendance shall count towards quorum. The meeting will be broadcast live and recorded on ECAP. So welcome everybody. Um, get, to get started, we will go over the minutes of Wednesday, July 20th, 2022. Does anyone have any comments or questions? I have one slight edit. Um, under construction progress update, uh, A, diesel heating oil spill, towards the bottom it says Mr. Crittenden responded that the biggest viable, I think that was supposed to be variable. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? All right, I'll take a motion to approve. O'Neill, so move. Do I have a second? Fourteen second. Thank you. Roll call vote. Weintraub? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Fulginetti? Yes. Martin? Yes. Reed? Yes. Cedarbaum? Yes. Vamosi? Vamosi, yes. And I didn't see, if, is Billy here? I didn't see. Uh, yes, I'm here now. Okay, great. And Wiseman, yes. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is a construction progress update. Walter. Right. Everyone can see the screen, right? Yes. All right. Great. All right. We'll jump right through in a second. Uh, so we did the minutes construction progress update. Uh, so we'll run through our typical pictures. So uh, here you can see two different locations of the field stone seat wall. The photo on the left is at what will be uh, the bus drop uh, uh, once phase two is completed. And then the photo on the right is in the sensory courtyard outside of the kindergarten classrooms uh, in B what is now Bewick. Uh, we had uh, some great progress over uh, at the middle school, which is the photo on the right. And on the left, you can see the traffic or the uh, parent drop off at the front of the new school. Um, to the Just to the left, you can see some light poles uh, and bases that are getting set up. And that's uh, the interior parking of that area as well. Uh, so quite a bit of asphalt went down in the past uh, week and a half. Uh, here you can see some photos of the, what, what are coming up to be as finished as the mock-up room, but you can see the whiteboards, you can see the tack boards going up. Uh, all the whiteboards are magnetic and all the whiteboards also have a tack strip at the top of them as well. Uh, so there's a combination uh, that you'll be able to, the teachers will be able to use. You can see the, the casework moving right along, uh, getting ready for flooring in this room. Uh, lighting fixtures are in, the ceiling grid is in, the tiles are not flooded yet. Uh, that will occur in the next few weeks, uh, pretty likely. Uh, over at the middle school, a lot more progress as well. This is sidewalks that have been placed uh, at the front of the middle school uh, where they're working on the picture on the left, on the right of that photo, you can see uh, the illuminated bollards that are going to be going in, preventing vehicles from getting up on the uh, sidewalk right there. Uh, it's a hundred foot radius curb that's going to be used as drop off area. Um, and then on the right, another photo of sidewalk and asphalt um, from the last week. Uh, on the left, you see a photo of the mock-up room uh, and the Promethean board and the Epson projectors. Uh, on the right, you see them stored in the building. Uh, so they, these are all in the building. They're getting, uh, I believe, installations going to start on September 1st or around there. Um, and that's moving right along as well. You can see the ceiling tile flooded in the mock-up room. On the top left of the picture, you can see the... Uh, ...area as well. Uh, some site comparisons. Uh, you can see on the left uh, are, is the photo from July versus the photo from August. Uh, moving right along. Um, doesn't look like much been, much has been done there, but uh, just out of the frame, you can see a lot of work's been done on the uh, seat wall, on the um, trap, on the bus loop, uh, and on the canopy as well. So moving right along on those front porch canopies. Uh, from camera two, 
Uh, you can see quite a bit of work's been done in that area as well. Um, great cleanup, grading, um, moving, moving right along in the front area. And then camera three, front entry. Um, apologize, these look like uh, something, looks like something might have got screwed up here. So I apologize. It looks like these are photos from the same day. So I will get the comparison for you, but these are from very recently in August. Um, update on the uh, diesel heating oil spill remediation. Um, the canopies, uh, canopy piers have been reset. Uh, we have uh, fully remediated any remnants of the oil. Uh, one of the requirements from the LSP, the licensed site professional, was that two monitoring wells be installed uh, for any uh, potential areas they need to be monitored for a total of one year which will be completed as part of that work um, those have been installed uh, the flowable fill and structural uh, gravel base has been set uh, the piers have been reset um, so the area is nearly complete um, and I, i'm just happy to report that this is much sooner than i believe even uh, the general contractor Bray had anticipated so we're very happy to hear that um, the work's been progressing really nicely. We were very concerned with this, but um, you know, the insurance company and all the parties involved took it very seriously and, and really got the work done. So happy to report on that. Um, that's really a construction progress update. Uh, happy to take any questions if anyone has any. If you want to just shout them out. If not, I can keep going as well. Uh, moving right along, we'll jump into the cash flow update. Uh, so, build to date, uh, 58.14 million MSBA reimbursement to date, 23.15 million, and pending MSBA audit, 7.89. Uh, you can see on the graph on the right uh, that the totals are tracking right along where we were estimated slightly below. Um, and the reason the July one is in there is because the break rec had not been uh, authorized at that point in time, but that will bring that bar right up to where we were expecting it at that point in time. Uh, so moving right along, great with cash flow. Um, nothing, no outliers there uh, are causing any concern at this point in time. Uh, construction look ahead. Uh, we're going to be tape, taping and mudding at the stage walls and at C building. Uh, that's really the last of the um, drywall construction that needs to occur. Radiant panels are continuing throughout A building. Uh, that's really the last area that needs to receive them. Linear wood grill framing. Uh, so there's some specialty areas where there's uh, wood grill framing, uh, CAF 1, music, uh, a couple other areas. Uh, those are continuing uh, uh, in the next month. Music room ceiling installation began this week. Uh, gymnasium wood floor uh, began over the last couple weeks or the last week or so. Uh, they did need to pause uh, due to some temperature and humidity issues, uh, so they did uh, wait, and they are now trying to bring that back into uh, a good installation temperature and humidity. Uh, acoustic wall panels are continuing at CAF 1. Uh, resilient floor is continuing throughout the building at A, C, and E buildings. Uh, it's really the ground floor at this point, so slab on grade that needs the resilient floor installed. Uh, toilet fixtures. Uh, uh, sinks and toilet partitions are continuing throughout the building as well. Uh, boiler room build out is uh, wrapping up very shortly here, but continuing as we uh, as we progress. Middle school parking lot curb setting and final pavement is going to be taking place over the next uh, week or so. Fieldstone seat walls at the exterior of the building are ongoing and likely and likely to be complete in the next month or so. And uh, fiber cement panels continue around the building. Um, we are waiting on a shipment. Uh, from the supplier, um, no issues. They go up very quickly. Uh, we're just waiting to, to receive them. Uh, glue lamp canopies continue at E building. We're nearly complete on the glue lamp canopies, which is great. And then roof edge metal will continue around the building as well. So moving right along there. Uh, contingency update. Uh, so we have progressed 67. 0.4% of the way through the project. That is representative of the entire project, inclusive of phase two. Uh, we have 21% 21.3% 21 uh, 21 in authorized changes, uh, carrying 22% exposure, and 50 that leaves 56.7% of contingency available. 
Again, just want to note that all of the current exposure is uh, all of the tracked exposure. It doesn't mean that PMA and Perkins Eastman are in agreement that those values are representative and accurate. Um, so we're continuing to negotiate some of them with great. Uh, some of them have been outright rejected. Um, and and we carry we continue to carry them in, uh, as exposure until the project's complete. Um, but no cause for concern on any of those. Uh, have, we haven't had any further uh, FF and E uh, buyouts necessary. And the wastewater treatment plant again is tracked right there against the bid savings as we've always been anticipating uh, and moving right along with that. Uh, so with that being said, and and kind of the good update on contingency. Uh, we do have a discretionary PCO for the group. I know Alicia was not here, but she did um, provide PMA with some um, information for uh, that she wanted to bring to the group. Uh, so the PCO was is brought um, as part of the uh, uh, it being discretionary, not required, but for the abutters yard um, uh, at Bankston and, and Spooner. Uh, to reuse and transplant um, plantings that currently exist. A few new, um, but I think if everyone remembers, and, and I know Florence is on, um, we've had some great abutters and uh, they've been very accommodating. They've been through a lot. Um, they did have uh, multiple trees removed as in their front yard as part of the project. Um, they've, they've been just, they've been great to deal with and it's really been helpful to have them there. Um, so they worked closely with the landscape architect who came up with this plan to reuse quite a bit of the stuff that's actually at Parkview now. Um, really the only newer things are the, um, the circles in gray, which are some uh, hydrangeas and some uh, rhododendron max um, and, a, and a Japanese, I'm sorry, I can't read it, uh, Japanese something. Um, but the total cost for that work would be $25,500. Again, it is, it is um, increasing some, increasing the enhanced uh, privacy for the abutters who really had some good uh, cover between themselves and the school prior. This really opens it up to that roadway um, and the traffic that'll be on there. Um, just one thing to note, once these plant, this would not come with a warranty, these plants would be properties of the abutter once they're transplanted. Um, so uh, we wanted to bring this to the group as this is a non, uh, this is a discretionary PCO. And um, I do know Alicia was in support of it. And I kind of echoed exactly what she said in the beginning. Um, but we are looking for a vote on this tonight from the group and happy to have any comments or concerns or for a vote. Anyone have any questions or concerns? Just shout it out because I can't see everyone. Jackie, it's Dottie. I just want to say I'm so happy with the way that um, the PMA and and everyone on you know on this committee has dealt with that issue. It was something very concerning from the beginning, and I'm happy that um, the Sullivan's Florence has been and her husband have been to all these meetings, and it really it's a good example of how that kind of communication can work out. Um, I'm sure it's been tough to live there and she has a smile every single time we see her and uh, just really appreciate the patience. And this is a great resolution. Hi, this is a uh, Florence. I, I just wanted to comment on one, one thing about this plan. When uh, the uh, landscape designer came in, she said that all the plants uh, were warranted by the uh, project uh, for one year. So anything that's purchased is definitely one year warranty, but uh, she said anything that's moved over would be watched. Um, and uh, if, it, if it did go down in, in that first year, it could be replaced. Um, I don't know, Walter, if that was your understanding with Ashley. That was not what was priced, Florence. Um, I, I, you know, I, it's actually not, they don't really specify between that. They just noted on the PCO that there was no warranty on, you know what, it might have said, let me let me open that up and just double check because I do have it. One second. 
because it may you may be right it may have said just on the transplanted so the warranty may be on the new items oh in a second 35. Yep, you are correct. So it says no warranty on transplants. So the warranty would exist on the new plantings and would not exist on the transplants. That is correct. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for clarifying that because I missed that. I thought it said everything. And I will update this presentation to reflect that. Anyone else before we have a vote? Okay. Would somebody like to make a motion either to um, accept or not accept this discretionary PCO? I'll move to accept it, full genetic. Thank you, Dottie. Do I have a second? Peter Baum, second. Oh, sec <laughs> okay, uh, roll call vote. Uh, Weintraub? Yes. Sobri? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Full Genetti? Yes. Martin? Yes. Reed? Yes. Cedarbaum? Yes. Vamosi? Vamosi is yes. And Wiseman, yes. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So, well, quick, quick update on FF and EIT. Nothing's really changed. We are still anticipating. Uh, furniture in October, the middle of October, October 14th through the 16th of November. Um, the, like I said, there's been no um, updates on any purchase uh, changes or anything like that. So we're still tracking with that underrun of the uh, total approved FF and EIT budget of the 3 million. Um, so, so we're still 132 under that 3 million, which is great. Uh, wastewater treatment plant procurement um, construction update. Uh, we've continued our uh, weekly meetings, 8.30 a.m. on Wednesdays. Tank installations are nearly complete. Uh, interior building uh, doors and openings are ongoing. Prep and placement of the ramp is ongoing. Tie-in of the new tanks, again, nearly complete. Uh, we do have one tank that has some cracks in it that is emptied right now, but um, needs to be repaired. Uh, masonry restoration is ongoing, should wrap up next week. Interior equipment updates, some electrical needs to move around, that work's ongoing, and then the interior tank painting is ongoing. Uh, those, uh, that uh, substantial completion date for that scope is 826. Uh, we are currently reviewing a um, solution for material that is not gonna be here by then. Uh, so Stantec is working on a solution to bypass one of the pieces of equipment. Uh, they're working with DEP, they're working with Rogan, they're working with D'Alessandro, who's the site contractor for Rogan. Um, they feel they've come up with a potential solution. Um, so we're gonna continue to review that. Um, everyone is aware of uh, the 826 date. Everyone's aware that on 829, we will have uh, uh, people back in the buildings. Um, so they're doing a great job. They're keeping everyone safe over there. Um, they're getting everything they can done. So it is one piece of material that uh, for one of the interior tanks that is not going to be here until um, a little bit later in September. But that's really the only issue at the wastewater treatment plant right now. Um, but we're working through that with the contractor. Um, and if, you know, if any um, super emergencies come up, we'll be, obviously be sure to notify uh, Dave Field, keep Alicia and David in the loop, and then I'll also keep uh, the school planning committee in the loop as well. All right, uh, dedication plaque. Uh, so PMA put together a little sample of a dedication plaque um, that is owned in the contract. Um, and this is a pretty standard sample. Um, I did get some feedback from a couple of people. I made the edits. Um, so it was a couple spellings uh, on names and then a couple different um, word choices to adjust. Um, 
does happy to take any comments on here for edits that need to be made if we did spell anyone's name incorrectly apologies we will correct it but that is the reason for bringing it to the committee now um so this is a draft that can go over to perkins to send to break uh, for their files um happy to take any comments on discussion um i was made aware that this would need to go to school committee so if the recommendation of this committee is if there's any edits we'll make the edits if the recommendation of this committee is to have it go to school committee that's fine as well um don't need a vote to send it to school committee we can just make that recommendation jackie go ahead caroline um i suspect there's no really uh easy way to do this but um i wish there were a way to reflect that jane martin was chair of the committee for you know basically the majority of the time and, and took us through an incredibly <laughs> complex period is there any way that we could put the you know your name and um and then the underneath that sort of uh, the, the dates or something like that like just years or i i don't know i this may not be possible it's you know certainly from a from an aesthetic standpoint i can understand it would be difficult but i really um i just feel like jane not meaning to embarrass you jane but that she just did so much i mean I'm in every way for this project i feel like if you know take my name off the chair and just move no, it no, down no 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 so, i'm not no you no, also no, can this. i interject no i'm going <laughs> to <Okay. laughs> of course and honestly for me, I have to be honest. I have a very visceral reaction to having names on this. Because and I know it's the standard to do a plaque this way. Um but I also know that um I remember seeing the plaque in the middle in, at at the middle school and I remember seeing the plaque in the high school and and my feeling is sometimes the names don't really reflect all of the people who are involved. And And so while I appreciate Caroline's calling me out, I'd almost love to see a plaque where we didn't have specific names. There were people who sat on the school planning committee at the early onset of this project who now aren't listed because they have subsequently moved on to other positions in in the district. So given that the project has a, you know, extremely kind of back to 2017 history, Um I worry about the fact that we are acknowledging some people and perhaps not acknowledging other people who were as heavily involved in other ways. Um you know we had lots of people who participated heavily in user groups and focus groups. We had lots of people students who actually contributed contributed significantly to the to design elements in this building. So I just always kind of worry about the fact that we're putting names when truly the list of people who have made this project the success that it is is much longer than what's just reflected here. So I I don't know if there's a way that we could rethink this a little bit and you know have school planning committee and just say the committee without listing the names have you know you know participants in user groups and not list the names have I, again just my my thoughts and i will admit it is a very visceral reaction because i know that it's more than just these names who've made this happen and it's really not unusual to to not have the names of the school building committee for exactly that reason like we've seen a lot of the plaques come through the in the last few years yeah. because um and they they really just many of them just have this the school seal or they just have a, a yeah. statement about education or a statement about the mission yeah. of the school the thanking the community yes rather exactly. than trying to name single people because it's just I, I, my 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 gut is to do something more along those lines than to do it this way that's just I'm one person but that's my gut uh, what, uh, what if we I'm sorry Connor go ahead Yeah, uh, so I hear and appreciate that especially uh Jane your humility as former chair but is there not a way to kind of do both I mean there's a lot of folks on this committee who've been here for mm-hmm. a majority of the time for years and there are certainly 
you know, you can't name every single person, but it, it, the school planning committee do, did have a indelible role on this project. Right. So I, I mean, perhaps broadening the town seal is like the size of the moon on this. So maybe that gets smaller. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And we, you know, fo focus on having more inclusive language. I mean, the draft that PMA has here does reference, you know, citizens, other school com uh, school committee and school planners, administrators, staff. Um, but that's just my two cents. Yep. Uh, Jane, maybe I'm not that this, this alleviates all of the issues you brought up, but we could maybe fit everyone's name who was on the planning committee from the beginning all the way through the end um, on, on there. But I, I don't, like you said, I, or like I said, I don't know that that addresses all of the concerns that you brought up. Either. Again, I'm honest to admit that it's a visceral reaction on my part because I know it's so much more than, you know, these, these folks who've made this project happen. So, so maybe one, I mean, this does have to go to the school committee. So maybe there could be two options. One is to have the school planning committee as it is and include the names of the people who are on it from the beginning. Or maybe one of one idea would be if we move the town seal down more center and then the, the wording that's under the town seal, instead of having a list of names, the wording that of the town under the town seal on the right side. So, I don't know, just a thought. Well then, would you, I mean, it's interesting. I, I actually see your point, Jane, and I also see Connor's point, but then would you also, I mean, the superintendent of schools and assistant superintendent and Sam, I know you're here, but those are also going to be, I mean, those are, you know, the present day, those are the people who are involved, but, they may not, they obviously won't be forever. So I guess it, it's really difficult to kind of parse that whole um, piece. But if you have some names, maybe you should have others as well, or maybe we should have no names. I mean, this is, this is a little more complex. I didn't mean to start a, <laughs> a, contro a controversy here. I really was just focused on the fact that Jane had done so much work. And Jane, I mean, your humility is incredible because honestly, there have been many people who've had, you know, a hand here or there, and certainly we've had focus groups, but that's part of the process. And that's something that people were, you know, happy to do. But I don't think that we have ever, I've never heard of putting the names of everybody who attended a focus group or something like that or acknowledging. Well, no, I'm not suggesting could, that. I'm just. We, I don't could, know. we could acknowledge that, you know, that there are many other members of the community who contributed in meaningful ways or something. I, I agree about making the town seal a little smaller and that would give us a little bit of additional space for, you know, kind of a narrative about the, the many, the dozens of community members and um, for that matter, educational educators who contributed in a meaningful way to the project. Mm -hmm. I just think it's tricky to have three names and then, or, I mean, I think it should right. say be no names or all of the names. Yep. I and think that I, if, I, if it was laid out differently, it, you might be, you know, I don't know how many other names were on the committee that aren't on here. Is it three or 10? Or I think it would be I first. Don't, it's not very many. That I have to look. Right, yeah. And, I, and, I, and I then you could, you could take those names and split them up in the three columns underneath the seal and move that copy, you know, up to the upper right. Or so I think it just could be redesigned and laid out. But yeah. I think that, you know, having the names of the people that did work on this is, I think it's really important to show that as a time capsule. I, I remember going back to, I was the first kindergarten class to go through my school. And I remember going back and looking at that plate and remembering, you know, the principal and the, and the teachers and, you know, the people that helped with that. So. Uh, so it seems like probably the next steps are just to maybe offline, maybe, um, I don't know, Jackie, if you want to just think about it a little bit offline and, and, and cause is this, how critical is this in terms of making a decision tonight? It's not, is it? Uh, well, Dan, this is a bronze cast. Is that what we own? Cast bronze. 
Yeah, but you know, they, these don't sometimes show up for a while. Yeah, so, so I, well, I don't think it's like super duper critical that we, well, you know. Well, what I'm saying is if we don't, I would say we should find out from Bray when they need to have a final design by and back back that date out. And I don't think we're far off from when it'll need to go. Right. I think we're, I, honestly, I think that we're a simple conversation offline perhaps with something coming back to the committee quickly and then just moving forward. That's my reaction. And honestly, if we wanted to leave it this way, I'd be fine with it. I just, I felt like, I just had to make my comment. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, I have, we have. So Walter, I got a couple of comments for you. Um, <laughs> okay. we're, we're Perkins Eastman DPC. So that's part of the official name of the company. Well, um, this, yeah, like, like we said, this was PMA's. Yep. Yeah, no, this is going to add that. So, and yeah. then I would not, I would not have any of these lines. I don't know if you anticipate having these lines on it, but I would probably not have these borders around it. No, 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 no. I like I. If you're just using it for layout, that's fine. But if we when we know we send it to it the was, director, it we're was gonna try to make it that way. Yeah, it was just for layout. Yeah. Um, Tim, were you gonna say something? Did, did... Yeah, I, I was just gonna echo uh, 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 Dottie and Connor's comments. Um, and I think there is a little bit of wiggle room on that plaque if you wanted to add names. But um, you know, being a guy who's from the fire department, we're very steeped in tradition. And we still have pictures of guys from the 1800s on our walls. Mm. Um, I think it's, um, you know, their pictures are there, their names are there. It does become a time capsule, these buildings, because we do rely on our town buildings uh, for very, very long periods of time, as we all know. Um, so I, I just wanted to just to echo those comments and sentiments. Um, but uh, that being said, um, I also wanted to echo, uh, Jane, um, when you mentioned that it didn't mention the, uh, the student contributors um, in there right now. And I think that would be important to put um, a recognition to the students um, in there. Um, that was it. So our, our next meeting isn't until um, September. So if this needs to be, um, and then again, it's going to need to go to the school committee to be voted on. So that, that's kind of a delay. So if, if um, I guess we need to know with, from Bray when they would need this, that would be helpful, Walter, and then we can kind of go from there. We can always set up a, you know, a, a, an extra school planning committee meeting for anyone that wants to weigh in on the design or how this should be um, between now and then too. It doesn't have to be a formal, everyone needs to come meeting. It just, whoever wants to be involved. So we can kind of leave that up in the air once we know what the timeline is for this. Does that Sound. Yep. I, the only thing I say is I think we need a little bit of direction on what we're doing here because I think I've heard three or four different um, recommendations and I'm not sure of which way the group's leaning um, and I don't want to head in a direction and then pivot back to something. Um, so is there consensus on what the group would like to see as a draft? Um, Dan, I have your comment on Perkins Slash. Is it Flash DPC? It's, uh, I think it's, I think it's comma. Okay. I can look it up. I have another question for everybody about the material of this. Right now we own cast bronze. Um, we would, if we had caught this in the spec, we might have done cast stainless steel. Just because of the age, the, the newness of this building and the materials changes over time. Um, but I don't know if anybody feels that cast bronze is something they really were can be entertained a stainless steel version of this. Is that, would that be a change in cost? I don't know the answer to that. I'd have to, I think we should check that and find out. We'll check that and find out. Okay. But I think from like the aesthetic of the building and the age of the building and where we are right now today, stainless steel might be more appropriate. Okay. So, so why don't we do this? Why don't you let me do a little research and find out how many more names would be on this. And um, I can talk to either Dan or Walter about drafting up some other options. And then we can, once we have an idea of that, I can send out an email about a short meeting for the planning committee to look at and give a go ahead or put some more edits in or some more suggestions just because I want to keep this moving. I don't want to wait 
another month. And I know Walter really needs some more um, direction before we go ahead with this. So does that sound okay? Does anyone have any other ideas? Uh, do we want to, does anyone want to see? Um, I, Dan, I just Googled a couple of quick pictures of stainless steel mm -hmm. for some. Um, so stainless steel and and these obviously aren't great for everyone to see but um that's cast you want that you want stainless the same way not printed i think right not that's, not that's, printed. that's printed you'd want it cast so yep. all right let's see if i can find a good photo of that uh, all I'm finding is aluminum, sorry. Not gonna have one to show the group. Um, is that something the group would wanna consider looking at as well, Jackie? The going to the stainless steel, cast stainless steel? Sure, I mean, it'd be, we'd wanna know what the price differential would be as well. Yep, absolutely, we can look at that. All right, yeah, Jackie, if you wanna just stay in touch with uh, Dan and myself and the, and the team, we'll work through that and if we do need to, bring this to, if there's another email chain that goes out or we go to the September meeting. Um, I don't think September would be an issue because we could hit the next school committee meeting right after that for approval. Okay. Walter, if you send this to us, um, Don yeah. and I will help design it. Okay. I, Chad, Chad sent it to you last week. Yeah, I, I don't know if I've seen this version. I saw the different, some some similar version, but oh. we can. Um, okay. We can not play it out. Okay. We will send it over to you. It's in Word format if that matters to you. It's in Word. No. No, it's not going to really help you. Laugh at you, Walter. It's in what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I, it could have only been trumped by a, it's done in PowerPoint. Don't yes, we would have trumped it there. <laughs> no, I promise it's not done in <laughs> Um, I, I've just been listening and haven't really um, offered any insight, but font is something that sometimes yeah. people care a lot about. So if anyone has strong feelings, <laughs> I don't know what you used in Word here, <laughs> Walter, but um, if there's a, you know, a school font that you guys always use, um, Sam, I know Alicia's not on, but if there's like a, you know, an Easton typical font, um, feel free to share that with the us so that we can get that right off the bat because it makes sense to use this font from the seal dome um whatever okay. that is so the only problem that could come up with that is that the seal is traditional and is serif font which is generally not uh considered as accessible and readable for folks who have uh uh any kind of visual strain so mm -hmm. uh, you really want to go with stand mm -hmm. that's what we do on our signage um okay Okay. The alternative is to use the what we're using on our signage, Dan. That is, this it, it's Dyslex dyslexia, dyslexia font or it, uh, friendly. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, yep. I don't have an example of that at the ready to share, but um, so maybe. All right, we'll look at that. I just wanted to put that out there because sometimes people have strong font feelings. And the other thing that would be good for everybody to do now, like now or now or soon, is to proof every everybody's names and make sure everyone's name is exactly the way they want it. Mm -hmm. Does could, if anyone I, I, we we took our best guess we missed two. I know is anyone on that has a spelling correction or full name versus shortened name. We can we can grab those right now quickly. I think mine was short and um, so we could do full name just to match everybody. That'd be fine. Okay. So we'll go. Is it, and is, I'm surprised you got full Genetti right. That was awesome. <laughs> Donnie, I, I've written your name more times than for the monthly reports. I have to type it in, so I've checked it numerous times on uh, the website. <laughs> and I think we can all agree that the logo is is definitely. Um, disproportionate so i think that'll make a big difference in the look too 
No, I, too big. I thought that was a really good suggestion on Connor's part. <laughs> big as the moon, I agree. <laughs> No problem. Oh, right, by the way, nice. I appreciate whoever did the names. I do appreciate the fact that I got my two L's in O'Neill because that only happens about one out of eight times that somebody, even even after almost thirty years on school committee, <laughs> mostly people still just do one L. That was all Chad. He 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 got all of them. So <laughs> and I get the corrections. So we'll take care of that. We'll get that over to Perkins and we'll um, work with Jackie on on um, cleaning this up and hopefully have something soon for the group. All right. Thank you. Yep. And I'll, I'll, sorry, I'll check with Ken and Sam, are you good with your name spelled like that? All right. And I'll check with Ken if he wants the full name. All right. Uh, I apologize. I think I missed something here. Um, but we have uh, a small presentation for the group. So I am going to switch over and Chris Leffler is going to run through our um, updated PowerPoint. Uh, so Connor and Leisha had asked PMA to put together a uh, presentation that or a few slides that could be used for some outreach um, prior to school starting and as we're wrapping up the you know the building um, and these were some, uh, we kind of hit all the points that Connor and had requested. Um, so uh, Chris, if you want to run through these slides and I'll, I'll just jump through. Um, so uh, we'll just run through each one and um, show the committee what's going to be used for a little bit of outreach by the school. Oh, you're muted, Chris. Sorry about that, Walter. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we'll run through the slides real quick. If anyone has any questions, please stop me. All right, we'll start over with the you are here. Um, so phase one, new building is already complete. We worked through phase 1A, the Spooner Street tie-in. I know there's a little bit of work that we had to circle back and tie-in on Spooner Street, but that's wrapping up here shortly. Uh, right now, we're working on the phase 1B middle school parking lot. It's making great progress. Today, they're uh, tying in some of the curbing. Uh, the systems and commissioning is moving uh, in, in a forward progress. That's going to be happening in the next couple of weeks. And then we're going to have punch list closeout and occupancy. And then we're going to move right into phase two site improvements. All right. So completed to date. Uh, so we had the, the detailed design. Uh, we had the detailed design submission to the MSBA. The 60%, 90%, and 100% construction documents have been completed, as well as the bidding. Uh, contracts were executed in construction as well as the construction permitting. Looking at the six month look ahead, uh, we're looking to go ahead and close out uh, phase 1B, which is coming up here pretty shortly. Uh, we've been working diligently to make sure that the FF and E and IT is delivered. Uh, we have a lot of the IT delivered currently in the building, but it looks like on the schedule showing on the 14th of October, we're going to get the initial deliveries of the ff &E, as well as the IT, and we should be wrapped up with all the installation by the 14th of November. As of right now, that looks like we're still on track. Uh, and then on the 14th of October, we're looking for we're looking about the new building substantially complete. Uh, the 2nd of January, ff &E, and &E, IT punch list. Uh, and move in will be complete as well. The 28th of April, substantially complete for phase two and closing out phase two on the 2nd of June. Any questions on the look ahead schedule? Right. Can we just get a copy of that document sent to members of the school planning committee? Is that possible? Yeah, absolutely. It's, yep, absolutely. Thanks. Um, not to be uh, sticking a lot here, but there was a, a shareable version of this, Chris, that you would email that I started. Uh, I didn't make any major changes, but uh, I did make changes. So okay. I don't know how you, you want to consolidate that and send it out to the group. But Connor, if you, if you, uh, we were working in that live document, so your edits should be in here. Are they not? No. No, I mean it says editing. Uh, C 
CR LC update draft. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to shoot that back over to me, um, if, you, if you want to save it, and I can update it myself. Yeah, that kind of that link should have been it should be able to should have been able to take any updates if they were saved. And we we do you know what, how it, about it, how? Said, it says saved. Um, it doesn't give me it says last saved fifteen minutes ago, which is about right. It doesn't give me permission to rename. Okay. It was just minor adjustments to make it. I, I'm imagining like this being consumed by people on their phone because that's how most people browse the internet. So I just made certain things much bigger. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, know. we can absolutely take a look. We have a couple more slides. We can, Connor. We can touch base tomorrow if you're if you have a free minute to go over what what you were looking at. And I'm not sure why I wouldn't have saved, but. Sure. Uh, okay. All right. So we'll jump through. We also had. Go ahead, go ahead Chris. Sorry. All right, so uh, PMA did their best to come up with a uh, digestible picture of the new parking plan. Uh, we'll start with Park View. All right, so uh, on the right-hand side on Spooner Street, the parents will enter Spooner Street. They will go through the roundabout, and they will exit also through Spooner Street. You'll see that indicated with the green arrows. For the bus drop-off, they're going to come in off Columbus. They're going to come down the new road, and then they're gonna drop the students off right on the corner of the Parkview uh, teacher's parking lot, and they're gonna exit through Spooner Street. Any questions? I know we had uh, multiple conversations with Sam. I think this is what everyone vetted and was comfortable with. Well, uh, Sam, we'll remove the, uh, the third bullet right here um, yep. so that that's not confusing. Sorry, we nice. We've been doing edits on this up until 10 minutes before the meeting. <laughs> and then we'll jump over to the Easton Middle School. All right, for the Easton Middle School, uh, this changed a few times, but I think we nailed this down. Uh, bus drop off is in the rear of the building, same as previous years. The bus exit is going to follow those yellow arrows on the top left hand side and exit Columbus Street. So for the parents, the parents are going to enter from Spooner Street. They're going to move through the parking lot. They're going to make the roundabout, and they'll have the parent drop off at the actual school, in the front of the school. And then they will exit again onto Spooner Street and leave. Uh, and then, Chris, the, other, uh, the only other note on this is that the uh, other parent drop-off, as noted as that X on the top of the page, is for parents who will be entering from the rear of the high, uh, high school off of Lothrop Street. Um, anyone coming that way, there will be a secondary uh, parent drop-off um, at that crosswalk, and then obviously one in the front of the school as well. So two, two areas. Um, and what this circulation path does... Um, and this was worked through with David Twomley and uh, Luke uh, Olden, the principal at uh, Easton Middle School, is to really identify this crosswalk here as a safe interaction for students walking um, so that when they come across, there's theoretically no cars coming into the parking lot through this intersection that they'll be able to cross the crosswalk right there safely uh, with no car interaction coming into there. Um, so that's the reason for that. Walter, just flagging that drop is spelled incorrectly in a couple of places on there. Yeah, something is going up. Uh, something's going on with our presentation. Um, yeah, it's a lot of bugs. It's like, well, even our other presentation, it didn't save it. Something, but we we had cleared that up probably two hours ago. So we will get that cleared up. But thank you for that. Thank you. So, so I don't remember. It's been so long since my kids went to school. But um, what's the time difference between um, when Parkview kids go and when the middle school kids go? We have half of that answer with Sam. So I, I don't know the first half. Our arrival begins at 845 for preschool. I'm not positive on the middle school drop time either. It might not be bad. I don't know where you're going to be um, sharing these, but it might not be bad to put the times on there also. So we're, prov we're providing these graphics for just as a, as a public update. Um, I know Luke sends out a more detailed description email to his parents. 
um, that, that would have that information. These were just really best guesses to use as a traffic circulation um, identification, not really for times. We could certainly put times on there, but I, I know Luke sends that email out to his students. Um, and I don't I just think it would be great to share on social media or even to put flyers in the neighbors' homes or, you know, people that are, it feels like the schools get all their information when their kids are in school. And I don't know anything that's going on with the schools now that I don't have kids there. But if I live in that neighborhood, I'm probably going to want to know what time things are moving or happening. Um, I'm already planning when the school buses go to be paying attention on how I get to work because I always end up behind a school bus. Yeah. yeah. Walter, this well, is David. <laughs> so I talked to uh, Luke before I came here tonight. So I think next week, by the middle of next week, he's going to be sending out a flyer to parents to notify them of the traffic pattern. Overall, the uh, parent, the uh, student drop-off hasn't really changed that much. I mean, the buses are still in the back. I believe last year they had that drop-off on the side of the building for the uh, parents to drop off after the buses have driven through up Columbus Ave. Uh, the uh, special education vans, they're going to still drop off at the same location. Uh, really, as you can see, it's mostly the, um, the traffic flow coming off of Spooner Street and then circulating through the parking lot and then up to the front of the building. Uh, but again, uh, Luke will be sending um, a message out to parents beginning of next week. We could, as I think about this, we could possibly take these uh, two diagrams and we could put the start times and put a little bit more information. Perhaps we could share that with ECAT. I don't know, I'm a big um, TV person. I don't know if people watch uh, the uh, community station. We could put it on there. We could kind of flood, maybe use the uh, local newspaper. I'd have to talk to Leisha and Luke tomorrow about that. But I think that's a good idea. I mean, the more information you can get out to the abutters and out to the residents, and you have different ways of getting it out, whether it's through social media or TV. So I think we could kind of flood the area. With yeah, the this is... This is actually a little, the drop-off for EMS, is, parent drop-off is a little different than last year. So um, yes. they, went, they went around the parking lot. They didn't go up in this right. loop. They weren't allowed to. Yep. So, so David, uh, on that point, I think, um, you know, it's really important that whatever uh, it gets finalized uh, internally with EPS and, and Luke for sending to the parents, it's basically identical to, to this. And, if that goes out next week, it would be great that whatever edits are needed to this get finalized. And this whole presentation, in my view, should just get uploaded probably to the school department page. And then we have the pre existing relationship with uh, Guilfoyle PR, who can send out, you know, a very short press release that says school planning committee is giving an update of a project. Isn't this awesome? How much progress we've made? Here's some, you know, what our assessment of traffic might look like. Please bear with us while we get through this final stretch. Uh, to your point, you know, ECAT, whatever, but we, all these other folks, we want to make sure that this gets pushed out, uh, that it looks like what's going to parents and that it's shared broadly uh, so that anyone who's driving the area uh, gets it. That's, that's what I would uh, hope to see. And, and Jack, if it quits, we'll, you know, we were emailing it in that vein with Lucia. I have a question. This is Florence. Um, this doesn't relieve any of the traffic that currently comes up Spooner Street. You have an X at the uh, exit to the new road with no access. So that's not going to be used at all. So now Spooner Street is going to receive the buses and parent drop off for both um, the middle school and for the new school, the Blanche school. So no. Florence, this is so. This is just a temporary. This is September through December until the constructions. Well, yeah, September through September through December. This is the traffic patterns that are kind of required because that that access road doesn't become usable until the end of phase two. I I'm see. sorry. I'm I sorry. See. Until. The beginning of phase two. Got it. Got and Walter, this map right in front of us is not showing buses from the middle school going on to Spooner. Is that no, right? No, it's showing. It, that's correct. Columbus. It's showing them on Columbus. Um, but the, bus, the buses will come down for the, the. The buses will go in and out Spooner Street for the new school, 
but not for the uh, middle school. Is that but the new school won't be open in September. It won't be open right. until January. So this is just the first five months of this, the next school year. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. And that's what we're trying to outline for. Um, that That's what the request was um, to, to be able to put something out for this is what the next five months is going to look like. Right. Thank and, you. Um, building on that, I think it's important. And again, I, I made some of these changes in the, the live document, but you're going to want, you know, folks screenshot things and share it. If I only see this, I have no context to understand that this is a temporary traffic pattern for a, a set period of time. So uh, I would want to be super explicit, you know, EMS traffic map back to school 2022, you know, September through December. Um, and I would also probably not use red X as more than one thing. So you have red X for no access here, red X for no access on the other page. You also have red X's for parent drop offs. Yep. We can use, we can change those very easily. We'll change the two parent drop offs, not a problem. I add one more thing, Walter. I think the, uh, the key thing that everybody has to remember is this is the plan for today. Once we open up in September, if we run into any problems after the first, week or two weeks or whatever after we observe how the traffic pattern works we may have to tweak it a little bit so as we know over the last couple of years we've all had to be nimble so i think that's the operative word on this is you have to be a little bit nimble this is the plan today but things don't go quite a, quite the way we think we're gonna have to make a couple changes and tweak it yeah so pma will clean up uh, the comments from Parkview, and we'll put a better clarification header here. We will clarify and clean up the spelling issues on this one, and we will change the two parent drop off X's uh, to a different item, and we will change the header here to reflect uh, again the September through December. Uh, anything else that we're missing here? That we just discussed. I just had a quick question on the Sheridan Street side of things. Was there a consideration made for a four-way stop there? Um, I know with Lothrop Street's four-way stop with Columbus Ave, it's four-way stop. Would a temporary four-way stop on Spooner Street be something that would jam up traffic more, or something that might keep it? Wait, what, where's where's that you're talking about? Uh, Sheridan and Spooner. So that's that is outside of the. That's a Dave Field question. Go ahead, Dave. I know you take that question quite a bit. Yeah, it's been looked at. It's not It's not feasible at this point. Very good. Thank you. And specifically, Dave, because it doesn't meet warrants, right? It, it, it doesn't meet the MUCC, MUCCD warrants for a four-way stop. That's correct. So this was looked at by the trap. It's been looked at many times over the years, but um, during the design phases project, it was looked at by the site civil team, traffic team, and they do not recommend it. Very well, thank you very much. And they recommend uh, slower speeds uh, through this area of all along uh, Sheridan Street rather than 30 miles an hour, that we go down to uh, 10, uh, tw um, 20, 15 to 20 miles per hour. Um, it's done on other roadways in other school districts and even in uh, some communities or residential communities because then that would slow them down because I can tell you um, at those stop signs on Spooner and Sheridan, they roll through the stop sign. They roll through it even with the crossing guard there. So, I, and I was thinking if you can't do that, maybe we can put, uh, you could put uh, those speed bumps like you have in downtown um, at uh, some of the, uh, before the exits so that they have to slow down before they get to a stop sign. And they can't come speeding down the road. There, there are no plans at this time to change speed limits. Uh, that requires speed zoning through mass DOT uh, and studies that have to prove uh, safety issues. And I can tell you from my experiences, there'll be no change to uh, the speed on Sheridan Street. Um, there's no way to justify a slower speed limit there. You mean because nobody's been hit yet? Well, I think that one of the biggest challenges that we have is uh, hearing about people speeding in different areas and changing the speed speed limits. You can put it 10 miles an hour. People are 
people just speed. The only the only thing that sometimes we can do is put out those um, signs that you know let people know how fast they're going. But on those side roads, I don't know that those would be that effective. Or um, you know maybe if there was police patrol for a little while on that. But really, it's, the speed is the hardest thing to control. People. On my street, on Elm Street, we get a lot of complaints for that on the select board. And no matter what the speed limit is, people seem to speed every, everywhere. I agree with you, Donnie. I, I think it's also important to note for anyone watching that speed limit signs are also governed by similar standards, right? Where uh, you have to do a data uh, capture of uh, with radar of what speed people are actually driving at. And Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have to set it roughly 80, whatever the 80th percentile is, right? So... Correct. That's the 85th percentile is what given given speed limits it may sound counterintuitive to people, but generally when we get a request for a speed limit, uh, we count the traffic, count the speed, and then you have to go with what the 85th percentile is. And that's usually higher than what people want the speed limit to be. So in the 26 years I've been doing public works, I've never seen a speed limit sign come to completion where we start of the project and actually put one up because it's not what people desire. What about, what, what about signage uh, that says uh, school zone? Uh, is that the same issue? You'd have to have uh, you so we, signage? Unfortunately, we can't sign school zone for Sheridan Street because it's not a school zone. School zones actually have to touch from uh, K to 8. They actually have to touch the public way that they're on. Maybe we could do some social media reminders, though, come up with some infographics, just reminding people that school starts again. I don't even know, you know, the first day of school, but if we could put a few things on our social media, just reminding people school starting on the such and such a date. Uh, we have little people that are going to be walking to school and people driving, you know, make sure that you're paying attention to your, to your speeds um, for you and for your student drivers. And we'll also, we'll work with um, police, you know, we'll ask them to do some directed patrols. They're going to be working with schools anyway, because you know, to Dave's point, it, and it's a good one, and this conversation is illustrating it, it's, you know, there's just going to be some growing pains this fall as the project wraps up and patterns change, and we're all going to, you know, do our best to try to keep it safe. But if there, even if we were to go back to the Traffic Safety Committee again and look at, let's say, Spooner and Sheridan, which we may do, it wouldn't make sense to do that until after construction is complete, totally complete, and the permanent traffic pattern is in place. So the, the next few months are just going to be, uh, you know, we're going to need to be flexible and we'll be in good communication. We'll try and keep the public updated. This presentation needs to be part of that. And, you know, we'll get some directed patrols out there and work with the schools to try and keep it as safe as possible uh, with a, you know, growing school complex and a construction project and back to school. Yep. So these two, Connor, that's exactly... Um a great summarization of what these two are. These are temporary condition to really make everyone aware that, hey, look where this project is. This is what you're going to see over the next few months. And then like we've talked about during the design is that the what this new opportunity presents is just that opportunities for you guys to review and find the best way that's going to work um, once the project's complete. But that's a, a great way to put it is that the opportunity exists to adjust um, within the school campus to assist with the traffic issues. Um, but looking at it in a temporary condition is really gonna, I think would hurt more than anything. All right. Uh, just, this is just a slide from previous, um, noting what everyone is going on on the future of traffic maps. I'm sorry, Chris, go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so here we have the front entry uh, rendering first comparison. So on the left-hand side, you have your rendering. On the right-hand side kind of shows the progress that we've made in the project. Yeah, and Chris, I think you're, you were trying to take a picture kind of a similar, and you can really see how this is coming together with the wood phenolic and the, and the front canopies right there as well. Yep, and we've made more progress. Uh, this was taken last week, and we've made more progress, and we continue to make more progress. We'll be tying in the road behind the building, and we're continuing to put the panels up. So um, we're real happy with the progress that we've seen. I'll continue uh, to try to get pictures that kind of match the rendering moving forward. Uh, any questions on the front entry? 
If not, we'll move over to uh, the mock-up room. So on the left-hand side, uh, we have the mock-up room for the first and second grade. Um, as you've seen before, we have the, um, the board with the projector on the top left. Um, you have your finished floors. And on the bottom, you have the same mock-up room, but it's just kind of a different picture from the different side of the room. So at the top, you're kind of looking from the back end, almost the view of what the students are going to have. And on the bottom picture, you're looking more towards the doorway into the hallway. On the right-hand side, kind of the same thing, except for it's kindergarten and pre-K. As you can see, it's a little bit different setup. You have the cubbies on the left-hand side. You'll have multiple sinks as well as a bathroom in the room. And we kind of gave you a different view. Uh, this is walking into the room. And then the bottom picture is more um, seated and suited in the room, looking back out the door. Any questions for the mock-up rooms? All right, the next slide, we have our budget and cash flow as of uh, August 12th. So build the date, we have uh, $58.07 million uh, with the MSBA reimbursement of 20, 23 million. And then pending MSBA audit is 454,000. Uh, and and we'll, 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 we'll update this, Chris, before we send it out to match what we had, but this was put together a few days ago. So it's just different than what we had for the um, previous, but we can update this as late as we can go to whenever you guys want to post it um, or utilize the presentation. And then... All right, so our contingency update. Um, so our construction contingency looks about $3.74 million. Um, we're, we're on track. Um, time lapse, 63.8% uh, complete um, for our soft cost contingency, available 1.26, as well as our FF&E anticipated coverage of 900,000, uh, as well as our bid savings um, available uh, 9.75 and our wastewater treatment of 1.49. Any questions on the contingency update? Uh, so could I um, just make a suggestion that uh, I like graphs in that level of detail, but again, thinking of this from a you know, end of summer update going out, folks who are not in the construction business are not necessarily going to engage with this as well. I would probably focus instead on projects on time, 67% complete, move in January, projects under budget, budget approved by voters, 94 million, current estimate is what, 80? Correct. And I would, I would just do that. I don't okay. know, well, I don't know right. it feels well, differently than that, but I, I think if you're, if you're a voter from, you know, the, the before times pre COVID who voted on this at that town meeting. And, um, I think that's probably what people are, would get excited about. Okay. Well, um, we'll clean those two slides up into one really just bulleted slide. Not a problem. Um, so that was really everything we had for that update. We'll make those adjustments on the parking, make it very, um, I don't want to say user-friendly, but shareable, uh, and then make make the edits noted. We'll clarify those two slides and, and get that back over to you guys. Connor, again, I'm not sure what happened, why your edits weren't picked up in there. We were going right out of the live document there. So a little ours says updated three hours ago. Yours says an hour or 15 minutes ago. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'll just download it. We'll copy and email it to you. Okay. Uh, no, I can't because it's 135 megabytes. So yeah, that that was why we were sharing it. We couldn't. <laughs> okay. It was, a, it was a large file. Well, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. We'll look to have that completed for the end of the week. Um, so that was really everything that PMA team had. Uh, Perkins team, any new business? All right, we can turn it back over to. Jackie, if you have any new business from the SPC. Um, I don't have anything right now. Um, Walter put up our upcoming meetings. Um, does anyone have any comments or questions? Just shout it out. I can't see you, so shout it out. Okay, so I guess going forward, we will work on um, the plaque and get something back to everyone. And uh, Walter and Chris, and Connor will update the um, presentation to go out before the start of school. And uh, I think that's it, unless anyone else has anything else. 
All right, I'll take a motion for adjournment. So oh, moved, yeah, full oh, generic. Yeah. Second, oh, yeah. Second, okay. Um, roll call vote. Weintraub. Hey, yes. Yeah. It yeah. looks like Florence's hand is still up. Oh, Florence, you still have something? No, I was trying to take it down. Thanks. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Sorry, go on. So, Bri? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Bolginetti? Yes. Reed? Yes. Peter Baum? Yes. Famosi? Famosi is yes. Wiseman's yes, and I know Martin had to uh, leave. So, I hope everyone has a nice rest of August and uh, have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.